the word and lift up your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week we talked a little bit about uh, uh, the wedding at Canaan. I'm not going to be in that scripture, but I want to take some, some stuff from that and start talking about some other things. So if you'll go with me to the book of Revelation... Chapter 19, got a couple of scriptures, <clears throat> we'll jump around just a little bit, and then we'll get into some, some things I kind of want to talk about. Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 and 7, and I heard it as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of, of mighty thunderings saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Over in chapter 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Over in 22, verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And I read those verses to go back to the, to the wedding at Cana that we talked about last week and talk about another person in that wedding. And uh, it's a person that's in every wedding, and that's the bride. I think the bride is very important. But from our last week, last week talking, we know, we know that the weddings in those days were different. There was a betrothal period that lasted as much as a year, maybe longer in some cases. And in that period, the betrothal was just as binding as the marriage. If you remember, Mary became pregnant with Jesus before her and Joseph were married. And Joseph said that he considered to divorce her quietly. So they were in that period. And during that period, it's just as binding as the marriage. And the only way to get out of that would have been through a divorce. Analogies of weddings are used by the prophets. They talk about God's relationship to Israel. And almost always when they're talking about that, they're talking about Israel as an unfaithful wife that has committed adultery Toward God. So think about that. But then we get over here in uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist and Jesus through his parables, they begin to describe marriage as a relationship between Jesus and the believers. Jesus and his followers. Jesus and the ones that have opened the door when he's knocked on their heart. So we have a, a, a difference there going on. But we as believers, the church, we're the bride. We're the bride in this relationship with Jesus. Now Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. He's talking about pure. That's how the church is to be presented to Jesus. And me as a member of the church, me as a believer, me as a follower, when I examine my own heart, I know and when Jesus examines my heart, when God examines my heart through the Holy Spirit, through His omnipotent power, His omniscience, 
He knows just how rotten I am. He knows that I am far from being pure, being that pure bride that he desires. But Christ, as faulty as I am, through God's grace, through God's patience, and through God's love, he still wants me at that wedding. That wedding that's going to take place one day. He still wants me to be there. And you as believers and followers of Christ, He wants you to be there too. The church. As the bride of Christ being the church, our love for Him ought to be pure. It ought to be pure just like the bride that He seeks. So I ask you today, tonight, this evening, is it? Is your love for Christ pure, undefiled? Are things getting in the way to keep you from loving Him the way He wants you to love Him? Sometimes we're like the bride that's just in love with being married instead of in love with the person she's married. We're just thankful to be there. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? What he didn't ask Peter was, do you love being a disciple? He said, Peter, do you love me? It wasn't, Peter, did you love being around me when I performed those miracles? Peter, do you love me? Not, did you love walking on the water when I called you? That's what Christ asked us tonight. Do you love me? Not, do you love attending Liberty Baptist Church? Not do you love the, the people that you sit near, sit by, which you should. But Christ wants to know, do you love me? Do you love me? Because he's the bride. I mean, we're the bride, his bride. He has chosen us. If you uh, go back to the times when you were dating ladies, your husband pursued you. He called you. That's what Christ does to us. Time after time in our lives, He continues to extend us that invitation and hoping one day that we accept. Christ wants to be with us. These weddings happen suddenly. During that betrothal period when the groom was getting things ready, at the home he'd prepared for his future bride. They, some money exchanged hands between the families to get this, uh, this marriage set up. And then one day when it was determined that everything was ready, he went and got his bride. As far as I know, there were no wedding showers, no last minute to-dos. It happens suddenly. And when Christ tells us, hey, the wedding's about to begin, I think the Bible tells us it happens in the twinkling of an eye. Suddenly. And I'm going to close here with just a couple of stories. How many of you have probably heard her on the radio and know who Johnny Erickson Todd is? Got a great ministry. You know, I think she was in a diving accident, left her paralyzed. But she tells the story of her wedding where she has to come down the aisle in her wheelchair. She gets her dress caught in the wheel. 
gets it all tangled up, gets grease all over the wedding dress, ruins it. In the effort to get her dress unhung, she ends up getting her bouquet hung in there. Ruins it. She said, but she didn't think any more of it when she looked up and saw her husband, Ken, waiting on her at the aisle. So she went down, grease and all, and married the love of her life. That's how God calls us. Grease and all. Filth and all. That's how he calls us. But this is what I want to kind of close with here. In doing some premarital counseling, and we talk about the bride. Of course, you know, any wedding nowadays, it's all about the bride. But what does a bride go through leading up to that day? If you've ever watched Say Yes to the Dress, I hadn't. David Sedaris told me about it. But those brides coming there with their group, they look at those dresses, and it's a big event. Sometimes they go ahead and get the dress about two sizes too small, you know, to have a goal when the wedding rolls around. Uh, they have, well, here locally, we, we, you have a, usually you have a hair and makeup appointment to go do a practice run. You get hair done. All the bridesmaids have to look just right. And you go through a whole lot, a whole lot, to come down to an altar or whatever type of venue you've chosen for that moment to look your very best. To look your very best. And I want you to know, grease, tore up bouquet, whatever the case may be, as a follower of Christ, as a believer in Christ, through Jesus, God sees you as that beautiful bride that has worked so hard to look perfect for 15 minutes. God sees you that way every day when you accept His Son, Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior. Let's pray. Father, we again bow before you. Father, we've had a very short message tonight, but I pray as it's opened my eyes as I've thought about it of how God actually sees us through his son Jesus. For the Bible tells us that while we were sinners, he died for us. Not after we come to know him, not after we gave up those bad habits, but while we were sinners, he died for us. And Father, you see us through your Son Jesus as that beautiful, that perfect, that spotless bride all because of the work of Christ. And we thank you for that tonight. And we pray in his precious holy name. Amen.